Hey guys, welcome back to the garden. Uh, I have got an update on uh, my rhino beetle uh, larvae uh, that I uh, found or adopted last year. And it's because I've been making pathways with the uh, wood chips. And <laughs> if you come closer, I mean, I've had to do it by hand, loosen it all up to check if not to not to dis I mean I am disturbing them but I'm not hurting them in any way but I mean look at these babies <laughs> they are pretty amazing and I think I'm I'm a wimp I cannot touch these larvae without uh, my gloves on I think they are quite firm and strangely disgusting and fascinating at the same time and I mean these are giants and uh, I keep finding a lot and and the beetles are now hatching and these are two females I see and we've oh, we've also got a male I'm sorry about this <laughs> and you know the most amazing thing is that these giant babies they actually fly they fly in the evenings or at dusk and uh, it's like uh, having a small choppers in the <laughs> small choppers flying around in the garden and um, this is maybe i've uh, set free maybe at least 20 beetles and then i found some another 10 um, larvae and uh, these larvae they can actually they can actually uh, spend about two or three years underground as far as i've read and um, and then they hatch when conditions are right but you see they are already uh, finding a way back into the pile <laughs> this one is uh, really going for it um, I'm fascinated with these beetles uh, I mean of course it's the size but it's also the fact that they fly and and that they lift like um, a hundred times more uh, more than their own weight and you know I, I just I think they are fascinating beings so um, this has taken me quite a long time because I have to be really careful but it's also given me lots of joy <laughs> and um, I have uh, made a small pile in here for all the larvae that haven't hatched I don't know if they're hatching this year or not Ooh, it's uh, they they are really uh, getting getting away quite fast <laughs> this baby i'm sorry darling so i'm just gonna leave them here and uh, i made a pile for them to be safe and secure as i move the rest of this um i've got other bits of bobs bits and bobs today it's beauty and it's uh, i have a confession to make in the greenhouse and uh, some other interesting bits about flowers and how they change color and uh, I don't know I mean every time I take a walk in the garden there's something fascinating I think um, but in the in the greenhouse I now again have made lots of small plant babies even even if last year I actually I made a whole video about how, how I was so done with annuals, but <laughs> here I am with lots of annuals. And uh, I'm sure all of you who have gardens, you will, you will know exactly what I mean. So when I get to the end of February or I think, ooh, I might, I might just seed a little bit. And now I have all these plants again and I need to find space for them, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I actually, I really love it. Lots of flowers, some basic vegetables, a bit of runner beans, some peas, lots of different kinds of squash and kale. That's, we need this, I think. And uh, I mean, I might make an update in, uh, in a couple of weeks where I'm so sick of trying to find space for all these babies. But then again, if I get too sick of it, I'll just find, um, people who want to adopt some beauty and some uh, healthy vegetables and uh, <laughs> I think we'll be fine. But um, yeah, I mean, my, my, my whole video about not making any uh, annuals is, 
a bit embarrassing. I uh, I think I'll I'll try to link. Uh, I'll try to I put a link in the description below, and you can uh, you can all point your fingers at me. <laughs> this is good. Um, and. Uh, I found out last year something fascinating about flowers. Some flowers, I'm not sure all flowers do it, but some flowers change color once or part of the flower changes color once uh, it has been pollinated by a bee. And I think actually we've got a really wonderful example down here on these forget-me-nots. So maybe i hope you can see it but if not go out in your own garden if you have forget-me-nots these two flowers still have a yellow uh, center and the other uh, three uh, are white and this means that these three have been pollinated and the yellow uh, the ones with yellow center have not yet been pollinated isn't that fascinating and really clever uh, so it's to save the bees from making uh, more work than necessary and um, I, I, uh, my first time uh, hearing about this was last year and if you have a horse chestnut, especially a red horse chestnut, they will actually also change color from a yellow center to a white center in the, in the, red, col uh, in the red flowers once they've been pollinated. I think that's again it's just uh, one more way to show that nature is amazing at making communication even if it's not talking it's it's conscious and it's efficient and it's communicating in so many different ways and um, i just invite you to go out check your horse chestnuts if you if you have any and the forget-me-nots it's really clear to see maybe not on the video but i i hope you get the idea um, and right now this i mean i wish i could i could share the smells of the garden with you uh, this the bladder nut is in full bloom now and the smells are so uh, wonderful and i really love the taste of these flowers and uh, the insects also love it so um, that's another wonderful thing right now the all the strawberries have started flowering and the tulips are amazing and uh, i actually i had i had a thought re regarding tulips <laughs> the uh, the other day that i want to share with you and um, it's because i have a patch of you could say human made tulips and a patch of wild tulips almost right beside each other. So these amazing, glorious, beautiful tulips are of course, in a way, man-made. Uh, uh, they have uh, at least been through human hands and human minds, human consciousness, and they are glorious. I love this, the splashes of color they make, and I think they, keep for so long and they're beautiful when they die back and I mean I love tulips that's no surprise if you've been uh, following the channel for a little while <laughs> it's just tulips and uh, beauty all over the place but uh, then if we move up on on the small mound here if we move up and have a look at this patch of uh, amazing wild tulips they have a completely different energy I'm not saying I love one more than the other but I'm just I just find it fascinating how they have it's just a different feel altogether so these are Sylvestris, the wild tulips, and they have come here all by themselves. I don't know how, but they are uh, sort of spreading uh, gently all over the garden. And I think they are such a match made in heaven in this, um, in, in a food forest setting. I think they are just glorious. And um, I mean, oh my God, there's so much to show you right now. The apples are coming out and the 
the cherries are in full bloom and the pears are also coming out now and uh, all the weeds are growing like crazy but uh, I mean isn't it just beautiful um, but I want to show you one last thing which I found this morning and it's called uh, it's a thinking slime animal <laughs> That's not the right name. I'll put the right name in the description below. But I found it on another pile of wood chips that we have for the pathways. And I've never seen anything like it. And it's really weird. Uh, so, well, actually, right here is an honorable mention. Because these are camasias. And I, this time of year, I love this bed. It's lined with ladies' mantle and then these glorious camasias. And I, I think this bed is so beautiful. Uh, the camasias, the, the, the bulbs are edible. We don't because I, uh, I want to keep the beauty as it is uh, right now. But uh, they are actually uh, becoming more and more just by themselves so I'm able to share some of these every fall in other gardens so I think it's a really beautiful thing to export beauty I think it's amazing to share the beauty and uh, so this morning I was taking a walk a morning walk in the garden and it has changed just from this morning this weird wonderful strange being that's on top of the, <laughs> the pile i mean it's it's slimy and mm, i don't know quite strange um and some have i put it on facebook to find out what it was and i'll put the right name in the description below some say that i mean it turns all black it was this color this morning so now already it's a different color and um, maybe if you you look at this close up it looks like we have another one growing maybe it'll be out tomorrow mm, i have strange things on my finger maybe maybe it'll be a, a thinking slime animal <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow but I mean this is the excitement of having a garden and also I think having living soil and compost and processes going on I don't know I love it uh, and uh, I hope you do too and I hope you are enjoying your gardens as much as uh, we are enjoying ours and thanks for watching guys see you later